So we're off to go and get the bus. The bus collection haulage people were meant to ring when they were an hour and a half away to let me get there. They didn't. Um, I've just rang them and they're half an hour in front of me. So we're now driving at 72 miles an hour to intercept the bus hauler uh, before he gets there, gets angry, and then turns around and leaves again. So, um, yeah, to the bus. Don't need, don't need to worry about the levers. I ain't got to do it with that. Then you better do it. When, when somebody says bus, you kind of oh, run. No. Think, especially with this truck, because... I'm now the proud owner of the Love Bus. As you can see, the head height in the bus is um, a couple of mil off what might be required, but if you're a child or a small person, then it's probably sufficient. Got a padded quilt zone in the ceiling and luxury wood zone behind. Got to our first roundabout here, so we're going to uh, go round the roundabout. We're having great fun driving at 12 miles an hour behind the bus, waiting for bits to shear off it. Yeah, I fucking love it, mate. Really do. You just go. It's the price of like some pipes and a bit of house, and it's a fucking. You know what I mean? Here you can see our industrial commercial grade tow bar, which we're going to connect to the bus. So um, let's go and see if this can pull the bus. Oh! Yeah. So forward, forward, forward. Everyone help me with this one. Come back, Steve, what do you reckon? Yeah, there. Yeah, there, stop. Boom, everyone, round of applause. Thanks, guys. Nice, guys. I think we can say mission accomplished. Mate, no, move it, take it back. As you can see, the bus has arrived. Barrel Man gave me 20 more extra barrels for my barrel collection. Whether this is successful as a child's playroom, coffee shop, or whatever, I don't know but come on over and I'll um, show you around. Here you've got the rusty front. Take all of this off, paint it black, make it shiny, chrome bits around there, hide the snaky wires, and then do what we can with the front. This side's gonna be the side of neglect, no one's gonna see it, so um, I might just paint it, or no, not even paint it, clean it and leave it. And then if you hop in the cab, which I don't quite see was how it works, but you've got an ancient speedo that goes to 60 miles an hour, Everything's got flaky rust, but we can clean the flaky rust off and make it shiny, paint it all up again. But yeah, big fat steering wheel, three pedals, handbrake. Because it was used as somebody's home, it's got like a wooden door and a blob on the back. I'm thinking we can take all of this bit off and then it will be all curvy at the back and you'll see the stairs and stuff. But what I think we're going to need to do is have a zippy thing, stop creatures running in and rain getting in. Coming on inside, we've got Sid here. Sid's our chimney and flue specialist. He's flown in from Madeira to remove the uh, chimney flue here, as we can see. What I'm probably going to do is poke a hole in the roof as well, which will let extra bats and birds fly in. That's not going to happen, is it, Sid? Smoking not allowed, dogs not allowed. Um, even in 1967, that seemed to be a principle, which surprises me. Uh, but the fire, we're going to keep the fire, but because it's dangerous and will burn people, we're going to take that out and we'll re reuse that in one of my little huts somewhere. So keep everything that's old and cool, but the things that don't belong here, we'll take out. Moving on up to the first floor, up the wiggly stairs. Again, we'll strengthen them up a bit. They feel a little bit wibbly under the foot. And then this is the party zone. 
so small children can run free and paint and do stuff. And look, a lovely outlook over the lake. Really nice view over there, look. So it'd be a nice place for kids to come and hang out. But the detail on some of these bits of metal and stuff, I mean, everything needs cleaning and lubricating and making good, but it's really nice detailing on certain areas of this place. But again, jagged, rusty metal, spiky edges, get rid of them. Uh, cigarette yellow window stickers, they can come off. I think I'll probably leave that side as it is with the carpet discs on the wall, because I don't actually see why. I know it'd be nice to look at the river, I suppose. It does smell like an old person's bedroom at the moment because it's been empty for a while. Uh, it's a little bit old manny. But what we want to do here is strip it back to restore it. But on the flip side, I don't want to open a can of worms um, because once you start stripping it back too much, you're left with a shell of rusting metal. But yeah, really sweet little windows that open and shut. Probably shut the windows for now, stop the creatures coming in. Oh, it slides up and down, look. Oh, it slides down, Tell it slides down and used to slide up. So the Love Bus has now been here with us for one week. Um, we've done a good strip out and clear because the cleaning guys are coming tomorrow to give it a good clean. Um, so follow me on inside and I'll give you a tour. So here on the ground floor, lower floor, whatever it is it's called on a bus, um, we stripped out the wood-burning stove. When we moved the bus, it's kind of surround collapsed and broke into pieces. And I figured that it would burn kids' hands and probably be a fire risk. So the wood-burning stove's now moved. We're going to reuse it somewhere else so it's not gone to waste. The kitchen area that was here, we've now removed as well. I was thinking I'll put some little kids seats in here, a little table or something. Um, but again, you can see we've uncovered a lot of the windows, or all of the windows now, so that when the guys come, we can clean them back and you can see outside. What I figured would be a good idea for the cab is to put a Perspex sheet over here so that you can still see inside the historic cab, but in effect, you're not um, going to get cut with tetanus metal. This thing here is quite cool. It opens up and you had a rotating number board for which number bus it was, which turns out was number 66 from Salford near Manchester. Um, but come on up. Here we are on the top deck. Um, we've cleared out a lot of the bits and bobs that were kind of rotten and mouldy. Um, I was trying to keep as much as I could, but the office carpet had to go, which was cool because we've now exposed the floor. Um, and again, we're going to scrape the muck off the windows because the view out there is quite, quite nice. I was thinking for children's parties, what we're going to do is have scaffold board tables along either side with little chairs that go and tuck under so that children can look at a river or a lake and do fun party based stuff. So that's the tour of the bus for this week. Next week, I'm hoping it will look really shiny. Um, it's important that we keep a lot of the character and age of the bus because it was someone's family home and I now know all of the previous owners and the story behind the bus and who owned it and why and for how long. Uh, I've even tracked down the driver who used to drive the bus back in the 1980s so uh, it's really important that I give it a good bit of love but I don't go to town on it so lots of stuff like this we're gonna leave just as they are really because it's important to, to keep some of the history of the bus. Here we are at the front of the bus. Most of this is going to stay predominantly the same. Might clear some rust off, but that's about it. Um, I very, very luckily managed to get hold of Arthur over at British Leyland. Um, Arthur's ordered me a new badge. It's an old badge, but it's a badge that would have been here on the bus. Um, and I'm going to remove this, put it on a memorial plaque for the previous owner, because um, someone went to a bit of effort to do that. So uh, if the Royal Mail do their thing, come back and join us next week where Operation Badge Fit will commence. So. Welcome back one week later. I've had a very exciting parcel delivery. Um, we're going to open it now and see if it is what we hope it is, which will be a Leyland badge. So by the power of magic, uh, that way and then that way, we've got ourselves a brand new sporty looking Leyland badge. So that can live there uh, like that. And then that one can go inside. So uh, yeah, welcome to having a new badge, Danny the Decker. And also, whilst we're on fun things, I bought another fun thing, which I didn't mention last week, which is a ticket punch. So I've bought an old bus conductor's ticket punch and a roll of ancient uh, ticket so that children can have a ticket stamped when entering the bus for a party. All right, let's keep rubbing. It's all right, you'll be like half a second of footage, don't worry. Where's your spinner? Get your spinner on the move. Sun faded blue. So shiny. 
cooker juice. You had a oh, cooker there, so it's probably it. cooker juice on it. Granddad's steamy fat removal. Glass to steamy fat. Uh, look at that. After a day of cleaning, the bus is now super shiny. Thanks everybody for watching the bus video. Um, I'm glad it made it here safely, got clean safely, and now has a new badge to be stuck on the front. Uh, please like and subscribe if you want to see more bus adventures, um, and I can take you on the wonderful journey of this thing, hopefully generating some money and being filled with children that can eat cake and um, paint pottery. <laughs>